They've gone through this entirety of the tournament not mm. conceding a single goal. They have been absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and, you know, especially the eyes of the world would have been on them and many clubs looking at them and their achievements in in this particular tournament. And, you know, there's a massive thing. The, the, the next thing, I don't want to jump too far ahead of myself here because the next thing, if you go back to 1984 that you talked about when they won it, Dave Sexton was the coach number of them players went on to be great players mm-hmm. at that particular time. So now, how many of these will go on to be great players and make that jump, that transition from under 21 to senior squad? It's an interesting point. And of course, no one wants to put pressure on them. No. Because there well, is a gonna, big difference. You're going to get it though. <laughs> yes. But there, of course, there's a big difference of what they've achieved. And we're not going to downplay yeah. this, but there's still a big difference of what they've achieved yesterday to then doing it on the grander mm. stage and in terms of the European and of the world stage when it comes to the, obviously, senior Euros and the World Cup. But we have seen it before. We go back, we talked about it before when England were last in the final, which was 2009, and they took on Germany. Mm. They lost 4-0. A number of those players in the Germany side went on to win the World Cup yeah. for the senior side. So yeah. it can translate positively to the senior side. Yeah, that, that's what you're hoping. You know, the... I'm sure Lee Carsey will be on to Gareth and saying who, you know, ticking boxes and who's been brilliant and who looks like they're mature and ready enough. Look, I, Republic of Ireland now, we meet up obviously every time we played mm-hmm. and, co- and sometimes the twenty under 21s would be around us. Yeah. And we'd see them, they'd watch them, they'd play before us. But also sometimes some of them come into the group and played in games or practice, uh, training. Um, so we get a good look at them. And some you could tell were quite a, a little bit further ahead than others. Um, but there is a gap and being streetwise in football and being more experienced is added to you as a player. And obviously that comes along the way. Um, so you, we got many a look. I mean, I saw Duff and, and, and Keane and when they were 17, mm. you know, um, people like Richard Dunn and, and others, Shay Given, that came into the fold from the younger element of the groups. Uh, and were they already playing for their first teams? Some of them were, yeah. Mm. I mean, there are, you know, if you, you go for even today's team, there's... a and Morgan Gibbs White is well, a regular lot, player. At, at well, that's East what I was going to say. A lot of these, you look at this under twenty one team; they're already household names playing yeah, for Premier yeah. League. Like you say Morgan Gibbs White, Emil Smith Rowe, yeah, and, Anthony Gordon, yeah. Levi Colwell now has really emerged as an incredible player after his loan spell at Brighton, for example. So yeah, well, they're prepared to pay a record fee for him. Yeah, you know, um, actually, in, Liverpool are interested as well. So could he be another one of them De Bruyne and Salah <laughs> transfers that goes badly wrong for Chelsea? But yes, I'm, you know, I. I look at certain players, and and then you could mention, well, Cole Palmer quite can't establish himself at City, but mm-hmm. then you've got an international in every position that's yeah. got fifty plus caps. Yeah. That that is a, a a really difficult obstacle. But Cole Palmer looks a really really hot talent. He's he's got that ability that I and I like this when I see players who can get the ball out of their feet and they immediately give themselves time mm. because he always seems to just get it out of his feet half a yard to a yard and he can then make his next pass and he can see things quite quickly and he does that really well, Carl Palmer. But there are numbers that some of them are in teams. Anthony Gordon, okay, he's played nearly all the games, I think, in the under-21s in this tournament. He's found it hard to get into the uh, Newcastle first team. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's quite normal. Big fee, young lad. Um, but they're, they're, this is the jump that they have to make and they'll have to do it quite quickly. Mm. But how do you think then, and this might be a pie in the sky kind of conversation because it's quite difficult, as I mentioned, maybe to make the step up, but to have this success now for the under-21s, we've we've talked about it a lot recently about the, how there does seem, especially now with Gareth Southgate at the helm, sort of a seamless transition. That's what they mm. want from all the age groups to make the step up into every age group for eventually the under-21s to then make it into the senior side. Should we be excited as, in, as, in, as a nation for, from an England perspective that maybe there is some tournament that England might win as, as, as a senior side because of what we're seeing in the, the lower sort of levels? Um, well, that's still a big ask mm. because it's senior football and there is a difference between that and the under-21s. But there is players there potentially... You know, you mentioned Levi Corwell. I think he'll be an England centre half, yeah. and I think Brighton know that. And I think they had him on loan. They're probably going, "Well, we will break our record fee for him because we really believe he'll be a, a starter for England within the next two or three years." Mm. <laughs> they, they really believe that. That's why they're prepared to bid so hard for him uh, to take him out of Chelsea. But there will be others. You know, it's now about. I 
I, I sort of go back when I was 21 and how far I was behind the rest of the players. I was a long way behind them. But I realised quite quickly that every time you're put into a new position and you're having to play against better players, you have to rise to the occasion quite quickly because even in training... Managers, coaches are looking at you and thinking, how's he doing against... You know, just say, example, you're a winger at Chelsea and you, you play against Asper Equator in a practice match and you do really well. You know, think of Juan Bazaka when he was at mm. Crystal Palace, when Man United paid £50 million for him. That You know, everyone knew in the game, and it became outside the game as well, he played against Wolf Sahar and he'd done really well. You know, that became his trademark and then one of the reasons why... So, hey... Watched him in training, one against one, handled Wilf Sahar, which is a really tough thing to do. They're the sort of things you have to do. We've talked a lot about the team. Yeah. But obviously the team are managed by Lee Carsley. What an impact he's made since taking over in 2021. Do you think the FA now have to do everything they can to continue to ensure he stays within this setup? Because there are links with Republic of Ireland. Yeah. I mean, Stephen Kenny is still at the helm of, of Ireland, but suggestions are because of his history of having played, being a midfielder for Republic of Ireland, that maybe Lee Carsley is, is being looked at by the FAI. Well, he will be. Of course you will be, will, will be. You know, you just have to think. How did Gareth Southgate get the England job? OK? Mm -hmm. He managed at younger levels, yeah? Yeah. OK? He'd done a great job. And in, within the FA, they thought, well, we couldn't find, you know, they had Sam Allardyce come in, it didn't work out. They eventually looked at Gareth and thought, yeah, well, look, th he's been doing really well with the younger under-21s and looking at the players and how they progressed. And they've, they've gone, well, maybe we'll leave him in. And from there, he's got left in. He's still here, what, how many years later? He's still at the, uh, the helm at England, mm -hmm. you know. So he's been there a long time, Gareth. And look, it'd be madness. I Irish football has been suffering. Yeah. I've witnessed it. Um, it. Lee has done brilliantly well with this group of players. But unfortunately, in management, you can go somewhere else and it's a tough gig and you haven't got the same qualities. Yeah. Um, but of course, they would be interested in taking him. And so would clubs. Clubs would be looking at Lee Carsley and think, he's done brilliantly well. How he's handled the group. They've watched the unity. Blessed with, you know, he'll tell you, there's never a lack of talent with England at any level. Under 15, 16, 17, 21s, there's never... There's always a great depth to every squad. It's it's fascinating with Lee Carsley because you know he's tended in his care, in his uh, coaching career to, to always be a part of a development yeah. side of things. You know, at Coventry, I think it was a similar position uh, as it was at Brentford. He did he has had spells where he's been a caretaker, and he was that at Brentford. Uh, I think likewise at Coventry, for example, he was part of a caretaking uh, team at Birmingham. Though he was a development coach there, and then moved into the England setup at the under twenties level. Do you remember A.D. Booth always called it the, what was it, the impossible job? Yeah, Is well, that, he's, just, that? he's just proved it, proved it isn't. Exactly. You know, you have to be careful, and I think A.D. would probably regret saying what he did because it's not the impossible job. There's way tougher jobs than England under-21s. Mm. <laughs> like I said, when you've been giving players from Chelsea and other, many other big clubs and, you know, a number of players who are playing regularly in the Premier League, that's not an impossible job. That's uh, a job that you should be excited about and feel like we can do something. When you're a manager of any level of any England team, you are capable of winning a tournament, OK? And because they failed, making the excuse is an impossible job I just wouldn't agree with. It's, mm. a, it's a great job to have. Yeah. And look, and Lee Carsley, I played with Lee uh, with the Republic of Ireland. Lee's a low-key guy, mm. very humble. Mm. Um, wasn't one of the sort of the lads in sort of around the dressing room, loud speaking. It wasn't like that. It was just a very level-headed man. Yeah. And he's taken that into coaching. He doesn't get over too excited. He doesn't get too disappointed either. So, you know, fair play to Lee. I mean, I haven't seen Lee for a number of years uh, because you just don't cross paths. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he was a great member of the Republic of Ireland squad. Yeah. Well, he'll be celebrating today after job done for the under-21s who are the European champions after beating Spain 1-0. Weekend Sports Breakfast with Natalie Sawyer and Tony Cascarino Sunday mornings from 6 on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.